I just want to show you the antenna and um, where it is at the moment. So the chaps were up here a few months ago with a crane and they used the bucket and pulled down this antenna and left it in that position so that Greg and Sandra and I can put it on the ground. Uh, but they took it off from up there which is about 33 feet, 10, 10 metres. They took it off up there and brought it down to here. Um, that was about three months ago. So I have to pull it apart. Uh, Santa and Greg and I'll uh, take it down. I think it's gonna be pretty easy to do that. And um, then I'm gonna repair the wires because a lot of those wires are broken. Actually, I can show you the wires here. Uh, show you what they're like. Yeah, so, that, so they're copper wire. And um, they actually go through that fiberglass spreader. It's called a spreader. You can see it there. And so what I'm what I'm going to do is there we are, there's a broken one. Uh, is um, use galvanized fencing wire which I've used on the uh, 600 foot um, V beam. That's a lot stronger. And um, uh, I think the reason they broke was because they didn't have any slack. Uh, they were rigidly attached to the fiberglass spreader and um, I don't think that's a good idea. I, I think uh, when I bought it, I think they, they said in the um, literature that, that it, the wire should have the ability to move through the hole, uh, but I didn't do that. So anyway, it lasted um, uh, nine or ten years uh, I was able to use it. Uh, so even, even though, uh, and, and by the way, I used uh, heavier gauge wire than what they normally supply, and it came from... Uh, the US, I think I paid uh, nearly $2,000 for it in bits and pieces. I think it was $1,800. And um, I assembled it here. And then Sandra and Greg and I, <clears throat> pardon me, we, we uh, put it way up there. We, we, Greg and I stood on that uh, central platform and hoisted up the, uh, the pole. Uh, that's in two sections, that pole. And down the bottom there, <clears throat> pardon me, <clears throat> Down the bottom there is a, uh, a prop pitch motor out of an old World War II um, aeroplane. Uh, I can't remember what type now, but um, it has a gearing ratio <coughs> pardon me, of 10,000 to 1. <coughs> so it runs off of 12 volts and um, uh, where are the cables? Actually the cables run underground. And uh, I can turn the antenna around from in the shed, but it turns very, very slowly. But it's better than turning it around by hand. And uh, I refurbished this uh, 20 metre tower. Uh, I brought it up here on, on my, one of my bosses, on Haig's um, long trailer. And I assembled it, and then um, Sandra, Greg and I put it up. It's, uh, it has two and a half tonnes of concrete under it, or is it cubic metres? Uh, but it's on my website, you can see the installation of both the antenna and the uh, tower. That's a beauty, great tower, that'll never move. And uh, now my job is to repair these wires. This thing here is called a ballon, which is a balanced to unbalanced transformer, if you like. It goes from 50 ohms and um, matches each of those uh, loops of wire, which operate on different bands. Uh, it goes from... Um, uh, let's see, it goes from 28 megahertz, 24, 21, 18, 14 megahertz, something like that. So it's a five bander, even though uh, a couple of these wires are, are joined um, to the one um, um, output, if you like, or the, the same lugs on the on the ballon. Hang on, I'll get around here. Hang on a sec. Let's show you what it's like here. Right, there, it is. I've got a new one of these, by the way. Uh, when I bought this, I actually bought two in case this sort of thing happened. So I've got a new one. And uh, that's that's the uh, coaxial cable. And it's also got a piece of um, nylon, what do you call it? can't remember. Uh, UV resistant nylon. Uh, so that's a screw. That's a, um, what's it called? PL52 or something or other, I can't remember. And it's screwed, screwed onto the ballon. Okay, I'm going to turn it off now. Uh, it's about 7 o'clock in the morning now, uh, 23rd of March 2020.
sun's just coming up over the horizon.